Well, no one can deny the surge in sustainable investing we've seen over the past few years. An effective ESG strategy is no longer deemed a nice to have, as we heard from Luke Ellis, but it's considered key to creating long term value. So let's get over to Steve Sedgwick, who's joined by a few members of our very own ESG Council. Steve. Mr. Cutmore, thank you very much indeed. And goodness knows over the last decade with you at COP15, uh, me about five years later at COP21, and now with COP26 on our doorstep, what a change we've seen in business, what a change we've seen in finance as well. And I thought it was great, your panel, your discussion with uh, uh, Mrs. Gorgieva from the IMF and how she was talking about the G7 efforts and how building back better is now about building back greener. Clients want it, governments want it, employees want it, shareholders clearly are talking about it. So we can't just ignore this one anymore. If we are management, it cannot be business as usual. We've got a great panel for you now. I'll introduce Fiona Frick, who is a regular on our show, Squawk Box in the morning. She is the CEO of Unigestion. Uh, Fiona says environmental, social and governance risks are becoming ever more important considerations for investors. We'll get to Fiona in a few moments time. I'm delighted to say though as well, we have Keith Barr with us, who is the CEO of IHG Hotels and Resorts. And Keith says, look, in a day's worth of conversations at IHG, a shareholder cares as much about the carbon reduction progress as they do about the business model, saying whether it's building a new property or whatever it may well be, whether it's job candidates coming, they want to know what the ESG strategy at IHG is. So with that in mind, Fiona and Keith, welcome to you both. Keith, if I can start off with you. So we've laid it on the table. It is more important. But what is IHG doing meaningfully to make progress? Good, good afternoon to you both. Great to see you, Steve. And um, I think what you've been talking about previously, in the past, it was a bit about compliance. Today, ESG has to be core to your strategy. And when we've been thinking about it, one of our, four, our fourth pillar of our strategy is, is communities, people, and planet now. And we're regularly talking about what are the things we have to do as an organization to have be a positive impact, being a, a force for good in these areas. Um, again, in the areas of people, again, how can we have a positive impact on the communities and where we operate? And candidly, carbon has become one of the bigger conversations we've been having with our shareholders in the recent years. We really want to understand what are we doing to have a demonstrable impact on our carbon footprint? How are we tracking it? What is the data? How, what's your journey going to be like? And how are you going to really make a difference over time too? And so we spend as much time now talking about sustainability as we do about growing the business and the profits of the business. Keith, let me just follow up with that. I'm looking at a, a screen grab of your top five shareholders, Cedar, BlackRock, Fiera, Fundsmith, and RBC as well. But it's the second on that list that I'm interested. When Larry Fink came out with his big mission statement, his letter to CEOs at the start of the year, it was very, very uh, tough on those who weren't going to get on board this journey as well. Has anything changed in your mindset as a company from having those kind of shareholders putting that kind of pressure on? We saw this coming a number of years ago as we were starting to have more and more conversations with our investors. In the past, you'd sit down with the fund manager and the last five minutes was going to be on what's your ESG strategy. Now we're coming back and having separate one hour, two hour conversations. And so we recognized we had to make it core. And we've been doing many things to lower our carbon footprint around the world, launching programs like Green Engage, which is technology that enables us to track all of our energy water consumption around the world. And we just made some big commitments recently on our journey to tomorrow saying we're going to we're committed to science based targets. We're committed to building zero to low carbon new prototypes and we're committed to learning how to innovate and decarbonize our existing estate because that's truly one of the big challenges businesses face today in real estate is that the vast majority of the world's buildings are already built today. And how do you make them more carbon efficient, lower and more energy efficient and have less impact on the environment too. And so we saw it coming, but we've definitely ramped up our efforts there over the last few years. Yeah, it's very interesting. And I'll come back to your five goals in a moment, because it's not just about carbon footprint, is it? It's about water, it's about diversity, it's about inclusion, and a whole host of other issues. We'll come to that in a moment. Fiona, We've had many great conversations on the show about investing as well. And I would suggest over the years, most of the conversations that the team have had with you on air has been about investing. It's been about profits. Is there a sea change where it moves from just traditional shareholder aims and now looking at stakeholder aims as well? Absolutely. I would say that, uh, first of all, I would say that 
ESG is also a question of investment because today any sector we will invest in, any companies will be investing will be influenced by ESG and obviously by climate change. So if we want to do good investment, we have to take into account these risks where climate risk perhaps is one of the most systemic risks that we are facing in the next 20 years. So I would say ESG is also about investment, but it's also about making sure that the people that work for us want to work for us, uh, our colleagues want to work for companies that had purpose. And it's also for our investors, which are pension funds, insurance companies, seven wealth funds in the world, where want, that want to have not only return on the money they invest, but positive internet intentionality on the environment, on the social uh, problem of our planets or the governance generally. So it's putting money at work with a purpose when it's while in the past it was made more putting money at work to make sure that we delivered the return which was acceptable. And yet, Fiona, there are two types of companies out there, and, and perhaps IHG is, is a brilliant case in point as well. Travel and tourism and business travel, perhaps some might say not the greenest thing on the planet, but you've got two types of companies, and I'm being very simplistic here. Companies that are inherently green, that have uh, an inherently uh, carbon, unintensive focus, so to speak. And then there are companies that are on a journey as well. How much do you look for the companies that are already there or the companies that are on that journey that have a good, clear strategy of how they're going to get to point B? I think it's very important to consider the companies that are on a journey because, first of all, it's the overall economical sectors that will have to move because obviously we will not ask people not to travel anymore and not to go to hotels anymore and not to use their car anymore. So we will have to find solutions not only for the sectors which are uh, low in carbon intensity, but also for high carbon intensity. And the, the beauty with ESG as an investment professional is, is that are lagging. And, and sometimes a company can have a very sound strategy, but you don't necessarily see it in data. So you can create a lot of performance by going into the companies where you've studied as an analyst and you see that there is value on the strategy they have put in place to become more sustainable that is not yet reflected in the numbers. Actually, Keith, let me just ask that question to you, just on, almost on the other side of the coin as well. How do you respond to, I guess, environmentalists and to ESG-minded investors who say, Inherently, your business isn't environmentally friendly. It does require people to travel a lot more, business travel, leisure travel as well. Some of it might be deemed unnecessary. Yeah, it's one of those, it's on a journey as an industry. You think about the, the hospitality, travel and tourism industry and hotel industry in particular, it's about 2% of emissions globally. Uh, but we've been able to lower that every single year. For the last three years, we lowered our overall emissions by about 23% by being very, very focused on this area. And I think it goes to the broader ESG agenda. What's the role of your company in society and being a positive force for change? We employ in this industry about one in 10 jobs globally and have been creating you know, millions and millions of jobs in markets around the world too and bringing people out of poverty and into the workforce. So that's a real positive impact on society that comes from building and operating hotels. But how can you operate those hotels more sustainably going forward, improve their thermal performance, reduce energy consumption, the move to renewable. So it's about balancing the, those competing forces there of growing economies, giving people jobs, giving people skills, but opening hotels that are more sustainable over time. And, and in resorts, you know, we're very focused now on moving to biofuels, using deep ocean water for cooling uh, some of our biggest resorts, using wind and solar too. So it's, it's making the existing estate more sustainable over time, but again, continue to grow it around the world because it does create so many jobs and help people in society. I'm, uh, I'm off to Glasgow later in the year. I'm, 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 I'll probably see you there maybe for, uh, if I actually uh, really uh, are going to be out there um, putting their case as well for the COP26. Um, do we need more regulation, Keith? Do we need people telling us what to do? I've got a great quote from my producers here saying, for climate, you need real regulation. This is a, a BlackRock head of a sustainable in, uh, investing quote. If you want, don't want Goldman Sachs to finance something, just make it illegal. Do we need regulation, Keith? I think you need thoughtful and informed regulation that is based by science and understanding what it's going to take over time and then partnership between governments and the private sector too. So we both play a role in this, but really having to understand it. We just did a, a white paper partnering up with leading um, companies in construction, engineering, sustainability and saying, 
here in the UK, we took an existing Holiday Inn and saying, how could you radically lower the carbon footprint of this hotel to prove that it can be done and it's commercially viable? And we've been sharing that here with the UK government. We're going to be talking about it at COP26 of showing there's a path to do this, but it may require some level of regulation and some level of support from the governments to help us get there over time. Fiona, I was up at the G7, well, down at the G7 in Cornwall, magnificent part of the UK for our international viewers watching now as well. Uh, but you make the comment about the US and what the administration did and didn't do previously uh, and what the hopes are for Mr Biden going forward as well. You, you made the point, actually, but not only did the Trump administration pull out of the Paris Agreement, but also went further, requiring asset managers to prove that ESG components of a portfolio were not detrimental to its performance. How damaging uh, is that kind of rulemaking uh, and do you anticipate better to come? I think the arrival of Biden uh, is making that things change. First of all, he, he joined back the COP agreement and uh, he, he put an halt on this legislation about Dole. I think what this shows is that the fiduciary duty of asset management has a very different definition in Europe and in the US for the moment, at least at the government level. In Europe, the fiduciary duty is to obviously deliver a risk-adjusted return to, to, to your, your client, to your investor, but also in a way which is sustainable. And, there, and, and that serves all stakeholders, even society at, at large. In the US, the fiduciary duty of asset management remains solely to de deliver target return or target risk adjusted return to clients, at least at the government level. Nevertheless, we can see with investors uh, when we speak with public pension funds, uh, which are quite famous, that the move that happened in Europe in regarding to European fiduciary duty uh, that goes beyond performance has also arrived in, in their institution. So I think it, there will be a catch up from the US and then it will be quite fast. Um, I'm, I'm very short on time and I've got about four more questions. I'm going to try and narrow a little bit. Uh, we've got a question in from Tom uh, and I'll address this one to you, Keith, actually. He says, I'd like to know what ESG standards and frameworks do you follow and why? Probably not all of them, but perhaps the key ones now, Keith. Um, we have multiple different frameworks and we're actually probably preparing for right now. The big new is TCFD clearly. And we've been working for the past year to really understand with some external support clearly about what is the impact of climate risk going to be on IHG on our overall business and our business model and understanding how we're going to structure our strategy going forward too. And at a corporate governance level, we actually have a responsible business committee that meets every single board meeting and talks about the role of ESG in our overall growth strategy, where there are risks to our overall business framework, how those risks are evolving and changing, and how do we have to mitigate those. And so it's a very, very rigorous governance framework that we have. And again, I think governments will continue to put more and more onto the private sector going forward in terms of, again, regulation and reporting requirements that we're going to have to get out in front of to make sure that there's a good conversation happening between the private sector and governments that the reporting they'd like to see and the frameworks they want to see can actually be implemented in a structured way. Let me get a quick answer to you on the, perhaps the most obvious question of the day, and that is, has the pandemic changed things for better or for worse in terms of how we go forward from here as well? Of course, many businesses, your own business, Keith, huge problems because of the pandemic. But do you think we can come out of it with a better set of corporate governance, a better ESG and, dare I say, a better IHG? I think so, absolutely. I mean, we're well on the path in terms of the sustainability agenda and the environmental agenda. I think the social agenda is the one that's really come to the forefront even more so over in the past 12 months and recognizing the role that we have to impact society positively in terms of gender balance, ethnically diverse colleagues, given the opportunity, training and development. So I think the, the impact of the crisis has actually made us more focused on ESG and made leading companies better companies because of it. And other companies will be left behind because they don't really truly embrace it. Fiona, same question. Things going to look better on the other side of this crisis? Yes, I think uh, obviously the world comes back with the absolutely need of growth and absolutely need of investment. And we have the possibility as investors to make sure that we invest this money in the best way possible. So it's a unique uh, chance for asset management and finance industry to show its purpose to society about investing in a sound way and sustainable way.
I, I hear you. It's a unique chance. That's what I hear a lot as well. So look, thank you very much, both of you. Plenty more questions. I'll just ask those on another occasion as well. But Fiona Frick, the CEO of Unigestion, and Keith Barr, the CEO of IHG Hotels and Resorts, thank you both indeed for joining us today.